Hey guys, welcome back to Purple Space Program. Uh, we are starting off today launching a science module up to the space station. Now this is not the lab module that comes with base uh, Kerbal Space Program. This is the science module that's part of the interstellar mod. And uh, we're going to crew this thing, start gathering some science. Science is needed for upgrades to reactors, things like that. Uh, this can also reprocess fuels um, for reactors, that sort of stuff. I think you can collect antimatter possibly, or you can at least process it with it. I'm not real sure. So uh, we're going to get this thing up into orbit. I know that we're going to need some sort of mega joules um, to actually power this thing. I didn't know that at the time. I think I kind of read it in the wiki, but the documentation for the interstellar mod is not exactly the best. So uh, this is the thing coming in to actually dock with the space station now. And uh, you can see it's kind of a tight fit there, but it does fit. It's a little bit wider than any of the uh, standard Kerbal parts that I have up here, but it fits in just fine. Starting to get some useful modules on the station. It's starting to look quite a bit bigger too, which is cool. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just transfer fuel, transfer whatever we need to. I think I brought a little bit of life support up. So we'll just transfer stuff out of here and uh, then we'll ditch the drive section and uh, probably move some crew over here. Yeah, uh, I believe I did move crew over here even though there's really no point. Uh, the game's lighting engine is glitching out at certain angles there for some reason. Uh, so I have two crew members in here. Uh, I go and try to begin research and like all the antenna thingies go up and stuff but I guess it does do research possibly without... I don't know. It, the the interface isn't exactly clear either. I'm, I'm actually reading this right now trying to figure out. Um, yeah, it says the science rate is pretty much nothing, so I assume that I need uh, more more uh, megajoules because it's saying I have zero mega or megawatts. I think it's megawatts actually is how it's measured. So uh, we'll have to get a reactor up here. Uh, I was planning on putting one on the station anyway. So this is another module for the space station this is sort of a docking complex thing like a a docking node this is going to go over near the fuel tanks it provides really three spots for ships to dock you could probably dock a fourth on the end there uh, but it's really not designed for that that's really just there to put an ending cap on the thing or something you know because uh, to give it more of a finished look there's really not room to dock a ship on either end it's really meant to be on the forward part there and we're going to have to do some orbital gymnastics to actually get this thing to dock. Um, the reason being that to build it, I had to, the way I built it, I guess I didn't have to build it that way, but the way I had it built was the um, part that docks to the station is actually docked to the service module ship. And that means once I got up into orbit, I need to undock, flip over to the other side, and redock. So that's the maneuver that I'm working on right now. So I'm, I'm just backing away and then I'll do pretty much like a little cartwheel thingy and do a 180 and we'll be facing the correct docking port to push this into the space station. Uh, it wasn't really the best thought out thing on my part because it did create a little bit extra of a maneuver here that I had to do. It's not a big deal, but uh, sometimes when you build something you can't really move it, especially with docking ports, um, you can't really move it. Because uh, it won't allow you to, whatever the the node that you started with is the node that has to, that is the base part for the whole ship, and so sometimes you can't just flip it over and actually connect things, and that's what happened in this case. So uh, it's no big deal. Uh, at least we got lights on this thing, so we can see what we're doing. So just uh, coming in all nice and easy here, and then we'll go ahead and uh, head on over to the space station. And those lights aren't really doing any good anymore right here. So, yeah, I'm just manually uh, piloting over to the space station right now. And the general idea here is to... Uh, we kind of need to get over to... It's like a quarter of the way around the space station where those fuel tanks are. So the idea is to just kind of uh, swing out to the far side of the station a little bit. And then uh, maneuver this thing, flip it back around probably about 90 degrees this time and come in and actually do the final docking procedure there and you can kind of see where this goes 
goes immediately in between the two spherical fuel tanks over there. So we're coming in on the good alignment now. Uh, Mechjeb is docking for me here. We got a lovely sunrise coming up, which I always appreciate because it seems like I'm always doing this stuff in the dark. So it's definitely nice to have the sun come out and help for once. So uh, Mechjeb's doing a nice smooth maneuver now. There's barely enough room for this thing to actually fit. Um, the fuel tanks are fairly big, but I did, like I always do, I assembled this entire thing as a unit in the vehicle assembly building. That's part of the reason I had trouble getting this thing flipped around the way that I wanted to for the launch, because I build the whole space station, and then I bring up, uh, I divide it up into individual components uh, for the individual launches. So I get a good idea of how everything's going to fit together and if it will work that way. But it does make it a little bit harder to actually do my launching. Alright, so we're just wrapping up the docking here. I edited this a little because it's slow going. So, you can see how little space there really is between those fuel tanks and this. Uh, but it's it's fine. And the space station is a lot more functional now. I previously moved my um, crew transfer vehicle that I had on here. I moved the to a different docking port on the space station. I actually don't see it. Maybe I returned it to Kerbin. I don't remember, but I know there was a, a ship here, but I moved it and it's gone now. So whatever. I don't know where it went. Recorded this a while ago. So at this point I had installed the asteroid um, pack, like version 23.5. I know version 24 is either out or coming out now. And I'm really excited about that because apparently it has 64-bit support, which is going to be amazing if it actually works because... Memory is a tremendous problem for me in the 32-bit version of this game. So I'd like to be able to utilize a lot more of my system's memory. So I'm basically lucked out and I had an asteroid that was already in a captured orbit for whatever reason. I don't really know how that happened, if it's supposed to happen. Uh, but I had a very small asteroid that was already in a captured orbit around Kerbin. And then uh, there's a couple other asteroids that I was looking at here. Uh, trying to decide which one I want to actually do an intercept with. I do want to capture one of the bigger ones. Um, it's cool that we have the small one that's already in orbit, and I am going to actually launch a mission to that to uh, get it into a better orbit. Right now it's in, uh, you'll see the orbit, you, you saw it a little bit before, but we'll see it better in a minute. Uh, it's in a really uh, ecliptic, it's, it's in an orbit, uh, a high ex highly eccentric orbit at a really crazy... Uh, incline inclination to Kerbin and it's actually far enough out that I'm I was worried that it might end up getting disturbed by the Mun so I wanted to get it into a lower orbit so that I would know that it wouldn't enter the Mun sphere of influence and have anything crazy happen so uh, this is using the new parts that were part of version tw uh, 23.5 uh, or point zero you know what I mean point two three point five um, these are the NASA parts along with the asteroid grabber thing which I guess is technically a NASA part as well these things are ridiculous like it's gonna revolutionize my space program having these parts they are very powerful very big and um, kinda feel a little too big but they're gonna come in really 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 useful for a lot of my launches in the future I like that it has the the mission flags and stuff on the side too these are pretty sweet parts um, I guess Kerbin rockets are generally, uh, Kerbal Space Program rockets are generally a little bit more difficult, um, not in terms of like the engineering and stuff, but it, just in terms of their thrust to weight ratio is kind of crappy compared to a lot of real rockets and their ISP and whatnot isn't as good as a lot of actual rockets. Um, at least that's what I've read. I don't know. I'm not a rocket scientist, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying what I read, I guess. But, uh, yeah, these things are crazy. And, uh, like I said, they're really going to improve the space program. So we're up in orbit. I, th I don't remember if we've actually finalized our orbit or not right now. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm getting all my remote tech stuff set up. Um, we still have a fair amount of fuel left in this main stage here. It's crazy. So we'll do a little bit of maneuvering. We launched into the plane of the target, which is that smaller asteroid. So uh, we're going to do some maneuvering here to try to get into an orbit that's going to phase with the um, with the asteroid because the asteroid, like I said, is in, or it, it, it is in orbit of Kerbin, but it's in a really um, eccentric orbit. So 
we have to be able to catch up with it in such a way that um, we actually, you know, get there in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, maneuver nodes are going to be really necessary for this. MechJeb is not really going to be of any use. It doesn't do well with really eccentric orbits. So I'm going to do a lot of fiddling with various maneuver nodes and stuff to actually get this into some sort of reasonable time frame to get this intercept done so that we don't end up losing this asteroid. And basically, I just am really eager to dock with an asteroid too. So I want to get this done sort of soon here. So I'm going to mess with some maneuver nodes, figure out what we actually have to do. All right, this actually gives you a better idea of the orbit here. So it took me a long time to figure out how to catch up with this thing. I knew that I wanted to be in a lower orbit than it, but somewhat similar. Um, basically, I got I had to figure out a way that um, this is going ridiculously fast when it gets down to curve, and it stays outside of the atmosphere, but only just. So I wanted to catch it at a, a middle point really more than when it's going really 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 fast I figured it would be easier to catch up with uh, but I don't want to go so far out that it's going really 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 slow either because that's boring um, so I took a lot of fiddling here but we ended up getting something that worked reasonably well so at this point I had figured well I've pretty much fiddled around with that enough it's kind of done fiddling around so it was time for action, and we're going to go ahead and execute this sort of big burn. This is almost a burn that would get us to the MUN, actually. I turned on the RCS because this thing turns like a freaking boat. And uh, we'll burn up whatever fuel is left in this main stage here. There's actually still a huge amount of Delta V left in it. Uh, this thing is just a beast. And uh, looks like it's going to finish the entire burn here. That's fairly impressive, so I guess we'll be leaving some space debris out here, because we're going to have to leave this thing behind now, because it's more or less toast, and we have finer maneuvering to do, which I do not want to be hollowing this ginormous thing around with me anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and decouple that. Trying to actually find the decoupler. These are all crazy big parts, so there we go. And we're just going on these littler engines. And this is pretty much the craft that's going to do the actual pushing. I'm hoping it's big enough. I have no experience with this stuff. So we'll see in the next episode. I want to thank you for watching.